Hello once again, my fellow Star Trek fans. I'd like to welcome you to another video. Now, when it comes to the Wand Company, I've shown you a few things already. I've shown you the Star Trek Type 1 Phaser, the operated mood rock, uh, the light inspired by the classic episode, The M Enemy Within. Um, I've shown you the Star Trek Universal Remote Control Type 1 and Type 2 Hand Phaser. And I've shown you the Bluetooth Communicator. Um, they've all been pretty uh, spectacular. And what I want to talk to you guys today about is something else that's going to be absolutely wonderful. And that's the Star Trek The Original Series Tricorder from the Wand Company. And it's been a while since we had the updates. So what I'm going to do is, as of right now, it's February 21st of 2023. And I'm going to let you guys know what's going on with the Wand Company Tricorder as of now. Um, we're going to go back. We're going to start with update number one. This update was made available on March 15th, 2021. This update speaks of the quality of the tricorder, saying that it will be worthy of the already successful one company communicator and hand phaser. Chris Bernardo explains that the tricorder is a work in progress. He would go on to say that the development team is very small and our patience is greatly appreciated. We are also introduced to the CAD, which hints of the functions of the unit. Update number two was released on March 29th, 2021. This fascinating update introduces us to Greg Jean. He's a model maker who worked on Star Trek for 20 years. Greg owns several of the last remaining screen used hero props from Star Trek the original series. In fact, it was his prop phaser which was used for the 3D scans that shaped the One Company Phaser, which was released in 2014. He also has the last known tricorder from the series, the original series, that is. It is this prop that is being used to make the 3D scan of the One Company tricorder. This tricorder prop is one of the two originals that were made by Hua Chang in June of 1966. The scans of the studio prop would be made in California at Protagon. The scans were done by a hexagon metrology system comprising a Romer absolute arm with an RS3 laser scanner head. It has, been, has a balanced arm to enable the operator to move the laser scanner smoothly around the object. It contains seven precision encoders to keep track of the exact position of the scanning head the laser scanner's 65 millimeter long blade of red light painted over the surface geometry of the tricorder, rapidly measuring the distance from the scanning head to the surface, 4,600 times per line, plotting highly accurate positional coordinates that stitch together to build up a three-dimensional point cloud of the tricorder's surface. On a nearby laptop, a 3D image began to appear as more and more of the surface was scanned. The accuracy of the 3D scan is 30 microns, or just over one one-thousandth of an inch. The surface of the tricorder prop had a texture of black Kydex material, and additional silicone rubber impressions of the surfaces were made using a separate piece of Kydex. The prop was weighed and measured, and the strap as well as its stitching was also measured and the information was recorded. Update number three was on April 12, 2021. This update introduces us to the components of the tricorder. We see the first images of the tricorder from the 3D scans as well as the internal structures needed to produce a working unit. There was much more than just the shape of it. It needed to be designed and its components planned out. It needed to be able to be manufactured in volume. It also needed to fit together with the components that would allow the function as intended. The tricorder would also need to be screen accurate, and the components would also need to be able to fit into the size and shape of the tricorder. This included a viewing screen as well as removable data disks. All the information planning would go into the functional CAD model. Update number four was released on April 26th, 2021. We are introduced to the 3D printing, bringing the project to life. 
3D printing allows a quick way to produce solid parts in any shape needed. It was with a much better option than injection molding. Once these parts are fitted and proven to work, the injection molds can be produced later, before production. These parts are 3D printed multiple times to modify how they will fit together. It also brings the CAD design to life where the work starts to pay off. Improvements and tweaks are always made before the final model goes into production. To do this, a Forms Lab SLA stereolithography machine is used. A tray of liquid resin is cured one 0.025 millimeter slice at a time by an ultraviolet or UV laser. This allows the model to grow out of the resin reservoir layer by layer. With a print volume of 145 by 145 by 170 millimeters, it is best used for smaller, more detailed parts. For the display screen, as well as the LED light pipes, clear resin is used that can be polished to make it transparent. For parts like the disc ejector, blue resin called tough is used, which make it more durable. The tough resin is more likened to the production plastic. Newly printed parts must be carefully washed and then cured using a UV light chamber. Once cured, the part must have its scaffold support structure removed. For the larger parts, an FDM or fused deposition modeling machine is used. These are the most common type of 3D printers. Fully working prototype of the tricorder is essential for the factory to test fit and make sure the CAD works before the tool cutting is started. To make the fully working tricorder prototype, 3D printing can only get you so far. The tricorder is constructed from a range of different materials. And in addition to 68 injection molded parts which can be 3D printed, there are 22 metal parts, a number of different size screws, bolts, springs, and magnets, a hand-stitched leatherette strap, and more than 350 electronic components assembled onto the six printed circuit boards. Update number five, which was on May 10, 2021. This update shows us the functional blocks of the tricorder. This illustration will describe the blocks as well as their functions. One, the arm cortex, M7, MCU. Two, memory, SD RAM, the flash. Three is the IPS LCD 320 by 240 pixels. Four, button in the LED array. Five, the sensors. Six is the audio. Seven is the MEMS microphone. Eight is the speaker. Nine is the hood door, hood open detector. 10 is the door open detector. 11 is a data disk sensor. 12, the data disk detector. 13 is the Mora motor. 14 is the STM8 microcontroller. 15 is a lithium ion battery. 16 is a USC C charging port. 17 is the charge status, and 18 is the power. Update number six, which was released on May 17, 2021. This update features the tooling of the parts needed for production. The tricorder is made from a mix of different materials, replicating the original as closely as possible. Machined and extruded aluminum provide key design accents as well as the basic structure of the tricorder. Die-cast zinc is used for the display stand, a stitched leatherette for the strap, and four different kinds of precision injection molded thermoplastics, a combined refined function, durability, and aesthetic accuracy to complete the replica. All the injection molded parts necessary to make a tricorder collectively weigh only 241 grams, roughly eight and a half ounces, but require two and a half tons of tooling to make them. 16 mold bases weighing two and a half tons are needed to make the plastic parts of the tricorder. 16 large mold bases, each weighing 80 to 250 kilograms or 175 to 500 pounds, pre-hardened S136H stainless steel are carved out using intricate and highly accurate mechanical machining. 
electrical discharge machining, EDM, a hand finishing process to create 68 cavities that are needed to produce every tricorder. Tool making to produce high quality, high tolerance parts is a complex and time consuming process. The tools not only need to have perfectly machined and finished cavities, but also need an intricate system of location pins, ejectors, molten plastic feed tubes, sprues, runners and gates, and a network of internal channels through which cold water is pumped to cool the mold as rapidly as possible during each injection molding cycle. Molten plastic is injected into the mold under enormous pressure. To stop it leaking out of the tool at the joint between the two halves of the mold and thus creating unsightly flash, the mold must close very accurately and securely. As larger parts require more pre-assured plastic to fill them, an injection molding machine's closing pressure measured in tons determines the size of the part that can be produced on that machine. For the largest tricorder component, a black panel, which will be molded in the same tool as the two doors, the molding machine has a closing force of 160 tons. 16 tools are required for the tricorder's 68 injection molded components. Update number seven, released on June 7th, 2021. This update explains the data disks and how they work. The disks will be different colors and will each have different functions. There are eight disks and each one will have a different information on it, which will be readable within the tricorder disk reader. The disks will contain the following, the logs, the catalog of captain's logs searchable by episode name and number, planetary, the images and physical data of our home solar system's planets, audio, user recordable audio suitable for voice and other environmental sounds, atmosphere, barometric humidity and temperature readings graphed in real time and recorded for later playback, radiation, EM field sensor and graphing FM radio scanner with FM radio player capability, orientation, accelerometer and magnetometer providing dynamic compass readings and three axis G-force data, status, enterprise systems status reporting in real time tricorder status, and archive, small selection of historical images and data. Update number eight was on June 21st, 2021. This update featured the Moor, the amazing art of crossing lines. The original Moor was made by superimposing a transparent film in a pattern over a version of a pattern printed on a white card. Blue circles show where the communicator's more discs were. They were cut from. The red circles show the position of the tricorder's discs. While the tricorder has a more disc similar to the communicator, given to the lack of space for a communicator-style pocket watch drive mechanism behind the tricorder's prop front panel. It is clear that the tricorder's more never actually rotated. Nevertheless, as a static pattern we see in the photographs, it is clearly made from two discs sitting on top of each other. It was never a question that our tricorders more should rotate to bring the pattern alive. The moir in the tricorder is driven by a stepper motor. It is much larger than the stepper motor used to drive the moir in a communicator. The communicator stepper motor on the left is tiny compared to the monster that drives the tricorder's moir disc. Update number nine. Released on July 5th, 2021, this update features little details. The strap, judging by the screen caps, it is clear that we're a number of different straps used for various tricorders that appeared on the show. Depending on which tricorder was shot at the time and in which season it was being filmed, there were clearly a mixture of materials and finishes used at different times. Our leatherette strap matches the critical dimensions quite closely at 1350 by 19 millimeters. But this, ours is a little thicker at 2.4 millimeters. It has stitching down both sides, but for neatness, it is finished on both edges. Next is the surface detail. For the tricorder, we have had 
texture sample chips made to reassure us that the texture pattern not only looks accurate to the original prop, but that it is the correct depth. The depth of texture varies from 60 MUM to 37 UM depending on its position of the texture with respect to the direction of the molding opening action. Shallower textures are needed on the sides of each part so that it ejects from the mold easily without damaging the surface finish. Next, the screw choices. On the outside of the tricorder, the only screws that were visible were three large polished slotted pan heads. The ones used on a prop were imperial, but for the 24th century bit of kit, we felt that the M4 was more appropriate specification and a close enough 21st century match for the screws used on the hero prop. Although hidden from view under normal conditions, two matching slotted pan heads are used to securely fix the strap to the tricorder. These are under the left and right side panels. The update also speaks of the scan of the original prop and the challenges that it took in recreating the screen. It also talks about the buttons used on a tricorder and how they were produced. Update number 10, released on July 12, 2021. This is the launch news update. Initially, the tricorder was planned to be shipped during the summer of 2021. However, complications regarding factories and suppliers as well as the COVID pandemic made this deadline unattainable. This update speaks of a release in the first half of 2022 now and suggests that the price will be around $300. Update number 11 from July 19th, 2021. This update features the hood of the tricorder, including its mech mechanics and construction, the hinge bearing to ensure positive and accurate rotation. The tricorder's hood assembly cannot rely purely on a tight fit and friction. Instead, the design of the hinge components incorporates sprung elements that can accommodate the minute variation that results when multiple parts are manufactured. This variation is called a tolerance stack up and as the tricorder's hood needs to attach to rotate inside the aluminum frame, this distribution of differing fits will mean that while some assemblies will be perfect, others would be too tight or too loose. In this case, the tricorder, a reasonably complex hinge bearing was needed. The hinge bearings has four important functions and as a result, it is one of the key elements of the tricorder design. It has both mechanical and aesthetic significance in the success of the finished product. The hood hinge bearing pivot design is molded in polyomethylene or POM, a tough, flexible, low friction engineering plastic. The bearing holds a tiny magnet as close as possible to the side of the hood enabling the hood open detection. Three PCBs, an LCD, a bundle of wires, screen glazing, and a thick aluminum front panel all have to fit inside the 23.25 millimeter deep hood. The mold complexity with the injection molding is an expensive upfront cost. Simple tools for a flat, shallow, unfeatured pieces are easy to design and easy to make something as complex as the tricorder hood, the tool itself is a complicated work of art and a triumph of modern manufacturing. Made up of 207 precision components to manage the cost where possible, tricorder parts of a similar size have been buddied up together into what are called family tools. In the case of the hood, it shares its tool with the battery compartment. Update number 12, released on August 2nd, 2021. This update features the first shots of the tricorder. The tricorder tools are finished well enough to test their function. The tools have been fitted to the Revlon injection molding machines and used for the first time to run off a set of trial parts. This step is called first shots. The disc ejection mechanism works as expected. Push any disc about a quarter of an inch inwards and the tip of your thumb will satisfy and click will tell you that the disc is ready to be ejected. Release the pressure and the disc slips out, protruding by the perfect amount to grip it between thumb and forefinger in a way that I know will be repeated over and over and over again by just about every owner 
just for the fun of it. Disc ejection works well, but disc centers will need some tool touch-up and add a subtle geometry and fraction more thickness, which will increase premium feel. Changes can still be made at this stage, but they are typically, hopefully, limited to a small adjustments only. Minor technical refinements to the fit and function of each part to improve how they work together. Main patterns and particular surface features that are part of the underlying design are included in the tooling, but at this stage, the tool cavities haven't been properly finished. They aren't polished, plated, or patterned with any fine surface textures yet. The first shot's a big test for every part of the mechanical design and its translation to the production phase of the project. It's also the injection moldings tooling's first trial run, which enables the molding shop to see how the tool cavities perform and what minor adjustments of flow, cycle time, and temperature profiles will need to be optimized in order to minimize any shrinkage and sink marts that will affect the mechanical performance and aesthetic appearance of the finished parts. Update number 13, and this is from August 16th of 2021. This update features a newspaper article with Edith Keeler in perhaps the most highly rated original series episode, A City on the Edge of Forever. Kirk and Spock play out the storyline as they chase McCoy through a time portal back to 1930s New York, with the plan of preventing an action that has drastically unhinged their present. In the process, courtesy of the portal's keeper, the Guardian of Forever, Spock is lucky enough to download a precursor of the internet onto the tricorder. For later research, we assume, and as a result, we are treated to the most visually arresting use of the tricorder screen that the original series ever offered. As with many decisions we made about our tricorder's functions wish list, early in the design process it was clear to us that our replica needed to be able to play out this pivotal tricorder moment in the accurate and as as accurately as possible. Key to the story and the tricorder's only on screen use as an image viewer are the newspaper images featuring the two Edith Keeler timelines displayed on the tricorder screen. Although images on our tricorder's 320 by 240 pixel screen are going to be small, it is important to have clean, crisp, original images, which we can use to recreate the most authentic, pristine, real tech experience. The readily available blurred, grainy, low contrast screen captures with their misshapen cutouts were never going to be good enough. And as the originals have been lost in time over the last 55 years, it is obvious that some blend of internet research and extreme retouching was going to be needed to recreate the original images at the appropriate quality level. Update number 14, released on August 30th, 2021. This update introduces us to the one company tricorder crew, Andrew Stockdale, James Thomas, Thomas Wong, Charlotte Pegram, Richard Blakesley, and Chris Bernardo. Update number 15 was from October 28, 2021. This update promises the first reveal of the tricorder. It was planned for destination Star Trek in London of 2021. The only link in this update was for the destination StarTrek.com and I was unable to get to the site. Sadly, I was not able to find any video or photos from the presentation of the tricorder. Update number 16. This date was dated July 2nd, 2022. This update sadly is to let us know the passing of Greg Jean. Despite being a legendary model maker with near mythical experience working on Star Trek props and collaborating with some of the greatest film directors, Greg was a quiet and unassuming person who was modest in every respect. We first had the honor of working with him when we met him in Burbank to scan his famous original series Phaser Hero Prop so that we could make our own accurate replica. Greg arrived with a smile, casually producing the priceless prop from the trunk of his Volkswagen sedan stored in a cardboard box wrapped in kitchen paper. He was kind, helpful, and generous with his time. 
He instantly made a big impression on us, and we grew to become friends. We kept in touch with Christmas cards and met again over the following few years, first to scan his communicator, and then again most recently in November of 2019 to laser scan his tricorder prop. At the time, we had no idea how long the development of this complex product would take, or that now, as we get close to it going into production, Greg would never get to see the result of the invaluable help he gave us. Update number 16 was the last update for the one company, Tricorder. As of this writing on February 21st, 2022, there has not been any more news regarding production or pre-ordering. But fear not, my fellow Star Trek fans, like many of you, I will be in line to get this fantastic piece. I will also let you know of any updates from the wand company as well. So my friends, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.